Now you must be knowing that different countries in the world use different currencies of money for their day-to-day -day transactions. Over here you can see different symbols have been shown. Now these different symbols represent different currencies. This symbol represents yen used in Japan. This symbol represents euro used mostly in the European Union that is in Europe. This symbol represents pound used exclusively in Great Britain. This symbol as you must be knowing represents rupee which is used in India and that symbol represents dollar which is used US dollar which is used in USA. So we can see that there are different currencies of money in different countries. In a similar manner there are different forms of energy. Energy does not exist in only one form. There are various forms of energy like sound, light, heat, mechanical, nuclear, chemical, electrical and magnetic. So let us find out where these respective forms of energy are commonly seen or felt. Now let us first talk about sound energy. Sound energy is a very common form of energy which causes in us the sensation of hearing. So if you have a stereo system at your home and you plug in your phone to play your favorite song, you will be able to hear your song. So it is because of sound energy that you are able to hear what is playing on the music system. Now when your dad drives a car, you must have seen him often going to a petrol pump. Now in petrol pump, these tanks that are present contain petrol or diesel and from these particular tanks the petrol is transferred to the car. So these fuels that is petrol or diesel, they are fossil fuels which contain chemical energy. So because of this chemical energy that these fossil fuels contain, once they have been transferred to the car, the car is able to move. So we can say that petrol, diesel and other fossil fuels like coal, natural gas, all these contain chemical energy. Now consider heat energy. Heat energy is the form of energy which causes in us the sensation of hotness or coldness. That is, if there is an excess amount of heat, we feel hot. If there is a very low amount of heat, we feel cold. So as you can see over here, a geyser has been shown and room heaters. These appliances use heat energy in case of geyser to heat water and in case of the heaters to heat our rooms. So over here from these appliances, we get heat energy. Now look at the sun shining brightly through the forest. Over here you will find that because the sun is shining and the light is what we can see around, we are able to see everything around us. So it is because of light energy that is coming from the sun that we are able to see things around us. So what can we say? We can say that due to light energy, things around us become visible. In the absence of light energy, things around us are not visible. For example, in the dark. Now we talk about electrical energy. Over here you will find that these stars have a lot of lines coming in, a lot of wires. And these wires are then traveling from this star onwards. So it is through these wires that electrical energy is transferred from the power station to our houses. Electricity travels along these lines and it comes to our homes. And it is with the help of this electrical energy that we can run the appliances that we have at our homes like the television, the computer, the water purifier, the fridge, etc. Now we talk about another form of energy known as nuclear energy. Now nuclear energy is something that we are not acquainted with in our day-to-day -day life. Nuclear energy manifests itself in two ways. That is nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. In nuclear fission, the nucleus of an atom is broken and energy is released. In nuclear fusion, two nuclei from two different atoms combine or are fused and thus energy is released. So the processes of nuclear fission and nuclear fusion release a huge amount of energy. 
and this is known as nuclear energy which is harvested in nuclear power plants like the one you can see in the picture now consider a very common form of energy that is mechanical energy now over here you can see that the roller coaster is going on these rails and moving from one point to another so mechanical energy is the energy that a body possesses because of its state of motion and its position so the mechanical energy depends on two things the motion of the body and the position of the body now let us talk about magnetic energy magnetic energy is the energy that a permanent magnet or an electromagnet has now let us talk about a very important concept as far as energy is concerned now over here you will find that several different symbols for currencies have been shown the yen the euro the pound the rupee and the dollar now you must be knowing that these currencies can be converted from one form to another that is if i have to convert dollar into rupees i know that 1 dollar is equal to roughly around 64 rupees so just like dollar and rupees can be interconverted so can all the other forms of currency among themselves and if we compare currency to energy then what can we say we can see that any type of currency can be exchanged into any other type of currency so similarly any form of energy can also be converted into any other form of energy that is all the forms of energy that we talked about these forms of energy can be interconverted so let us see how interconversion takes place in some common appliances now you must be having a bulb at your home when you switch on the bulb you see that light is emanating from the bulb so what can we say this bulb is glowing because electricity is coming to our homes and this bulb is giving us light so we can say that the glowing bulb is converting electrical energy into light energy now consider the scenario for your sound system in a sound system or a stereo system which works on electricity it is taking in electrical energy and this electrical energy is getting converted into sound energy in order to play your favorite song so an interconversion from electrical to sound energy is taking place similarly you must also be having a gas stove at your home and you will find that these gas stoves are attached to gas cylinders this object is the gas cylinder now these gas cylinders contains a fossil fuel inside it the fossil fuel is liquefied petroleum gas now it is with the help of this liquefied petroleum gas that cooking takes place how if we turn on the knob over here lpg or liquefied petroleum gas flows into the gas stove and when we light the gas stove we are able to cook food on the fire that is produced so the liquefied petroleum gas because it is a fossil fuel has a certain amount of chemical energy and this chemical energy is getting converted into heat energy with the help of which we are able to cook now you must have played with a toy car when you were young if you would have examined the toy car closely it contains certain cells or batteries inside it now what happens inside a battery these batteries if opened up you will find that they contain a certain chemical inside them which is known as the electrolyte now this electrolyte is able to supply electricity to this car by virtue of it it moves so when this battery is being used we can say that it has some amount of chemical energy because it has the electrolyte within it this electrolyte is what is providing the electricity so chemical energy is getting converted into electrical energy and with the help of this electrical energy the car is moving so when a car is moving it is in motion and thus it will possess mechanical energy thus we can say that chemical energy is getting converted to electrical energy which in turn is getting converted to mechanical energy 
Now we talk about an important concept. So in order to discuss this concept, I will use a very, very simple analogy. Over here, I have considered a very small community. This community consists of four people. The shopkeeper, supplier, son and his dad. So this community consists of four people and as you can see, it is a fairly small community. Now we consider an initial case where the dad has 1000 units of money, the shopkeeper has 500 units of money, the supplier has 200 units of money and the son initially does not have any money. So if we add the total amount of money in the community, we will find that it is 1000 that the dad has plus 500 which the shopkeeper has plus 200 which the supplier has. And since the son does not have any money, it is zero. So the total money involved in the community is 1700 units. Now let us consider certain transactions in the community taking place. So initially what happens is the dad gives 200 units of money to the son. So we can see that the dad has given 200 units of money to the son. So the son who initially did not have any money now has 200 units of money and the dad who initially had 1000 units now has 800 units. Now what the son does is the son uses 100 units from his money to buy goods from the shopkeeper. So the moment the son uses 100 units he has to give away 100 units which the shopkeeper is getting. So now the son has 100 units because he gave away 100 from his 200 and the shopkeeper has 100 units more which the son gave him to buy the goods. So the shopkeeper has 600 units. Now what the shopkeeper does is he finds himself out of a certain amount of goods and now he has to approach the supplier in order to get those goods for his shop. So what the shopkeeper does is he approaches the supplier and buys goods worth 50 units. So the shopkeeper gives away 50 units from his 600 units. So now the shopkeeper has 550 units and these 50 units are given to the supplier. Now the supplier initially had 200 units. So when the shopkeeper gives him 50 units, he will have 250 units. So let us now look at the final state where the community stands. The dad after giving away 200 to his son has 800 units of money. The shopkeeper after accepting money from the son and giving away 50 to the supplier has 550 units. The supplier because he obtained money from the shopkeeper 50 units now has 250 units and the son who initially had no money now has 100 units because his dad gave him 200 units out of which he used 100 units to buy certain goods from the shopkeeper. So again if you find out the total money involved in the community you add up the respective units each individual has that will be 800 which the dad has 550 which the shopkeeper has 250 which the supplier has and 100 which the son has. So if you add up these quantities you will find that the total amount of money involved remains 1700 units. So despite the fact that money has changed hands in so many transactions the initial amount of money involved in the community 1700 units is the same as the final amount of money that is in the community which is also equal to 1700 units. So we can see that the total money in the small community remains the same. It is constant and it is not changing. 1700 remains 1700. Now community is a part of the universe because the community resides in earth and it is a part of the universe at large. So we can see that this community is a part of the universe. Now since community is a part of the universe we can call it a system. 
What is a system? A system is defined as any part of the universe which has been kept under observation. So over here we were observing the community, that is how cash was flowing inside the community. So thus we can say that community is a system because it is a part of the universe and it has been kept under observation. Now there is one important assumption that we are taking into consideration. That assumption is that currency exchange from other communities is not allowed. Or in other words we can say that no money is flowing into the community from outside, neither is any money going from the community to outside. So what can we say? We can call this community an isolated community. Because this community is only involved in transactions which are occurring within itself. There are no external transactions which are taking place. So we use a similar analogy in case of energy. We say that when we have a system that we are taking as an isolated system, that is no energy exchange from any other system is allowed. Or in other words, the system that we have placed under observation is not letting in any energy from the outside, neither is it allowing any energy to flow outside. So thus, when we are considering an isolated system, we can say that the total energy in the system remains constant. How? Using the analogy that total money in the small community remain the same, and since the community was an isolated system, we compare money with energy. So money in the small community remain the same. In a similar manner, energy in an isolated system remains the same. So what can we say? That the total energy of an isolated system remains the same. It is constant and it does not change. It only changes from one form of energy to another form. That is, as we saw, interconversion of energy takes place, whether it be from electrical to light or chemical to heat or in any other form. But the total energy of an isolated system always remains the same. It never changes only changes from one form to another. 